In part one of this video series, we looked at the background to the question, where are the lost tribes of Israel? We found that there's a difference between the Israelites and the Jews. Israelites were from the northern kingdom of Israel. The Jews were from the southern kingdom of Judah. We also found that all Jews are Israelites, but not all Israelites are Jews. In other words, Jews are only one portion of a much larger group called Israel. Today, Jews only represent around two or three of the original 12 tribes of Israel. Remember that God had made a binding covenant with Israel as his representative people in the world. And this happened at Mount Sinai under Moses. And under the covenant, they would always remain God's people and God would achieve his purposes through them. But they could either enjoy his blessings as those purposes worked out, or they could suffer dire consequences if they abandoned the covenant and the God of that covenant and his loving and just ways. We also found that originally the two kingdoms were one called Israel. Under Kings David and Solomon, the unified kingdom of 12 tribes called Israel had achieved great heights and had dominated the peoples around them. But in the late 900s BC, Israel split into two rival kingdoms, Israel and Judah. In the south, Judah under the descendants of David were sporadic in their faithfulness to the covenant. Sometimes they followed God, sometimes they abandoned God and lapsed into rebellion and idolatry. And Israel to the north, well, from the beginning of the split, the northern kingdom of Israel, under a variety of petty kings, abandoned the covenant and served demonic idols, engaging in dark and horrific practices. Well, that was part one. In part two, we will look at what happened as the northern kingdom refused to listen to the warnings of the prophets. So in the mid-700s BC, God allowed the mighty empire of Assyria to put pressure on Israel. Now Assyria was a cruel and vengeful nation. They were famous for their policy of forced relocation of conquered peoples. And that would ensure that the conquered people would lose their ability to rise against the empire ever again. The Assyrians demanded huge amounts of tribute from Israel in exchange for an alliance, and I think today we would call that protection money. Israel sometimes paid, and sometimes they tried to escape Assyrian tyranny by forming alliances with other nations like Egypt. So in the late 740s BC, Assyria made a punitive expedition into Israel's territories in response to one of these alliances, and they deported elements of the tribes of Zebulun, Issachar, Asher, Naphtali, Manasseh, Reuben, and Gad. After this, Israel quickly came back into line. But then a couple of decades later in the 720s BC, King Hoshea again refused to pay tribute. This move would have grave consequences because the Assyrians would show no mercy and Hoshea would be the last king of Israel. Listen to the record of this event in the Bible from 1 Kings 17, 1-8. In the twelfth year of Ahaz, king of Judah, Hoshea son of Elah became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned nine years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, but not like the kings of Israel who preceded him. Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, came up to attack Hoshea, who had been Shalmaneser's vassal, and had paid him tribute. But the king of Assyria discovered that Hoshea was a traitor, for he had sent envoys to So, king of Egypt, and he no longer paid tribute to the king of Assyria as he had done year by year. Therefore Shalmaneser seized him and put him in prison. The king of Assyria invaded the entire land, marched against Samaria, and laid siege to it for three years. In the ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyria captured Samaria and deported the Israelites to Assyria. He settled them in Hala, in Gozan on the Habor River, and in the towns of the Medes. All of this took place because the Israelites had sinned against the Lord their God, who had brought them up out of Egypt from under the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. They worshipped other gods and followed the practices of the nations that the Lord had driven out before them, as well as the practices that the kings of Israel had introduced. Now I find it ironic that they were dumped in the very places, very close to where Abraham and Jacob had lived for a time more than a thousand years before. So what does that deportation look like? Here's a map. Here are the kingdoms of Judah and Israel, Judah in the south and west with its capital in Jerusalem, and Israel to the north and east, with Samaria as its capital. Now where on the map were the northern Israelites taken? It tells us that they were carried captive to Hala, goes on on the Habor River, and to the towns of the Medes. In other words, in this region. Today we call this northeast Syria, southeast Turkey, 
northern Iraq, and further east to northern Iran, regions which are very much in the news lately. But archaeologists will point out that so far there has been no significant evidence of an Israelite presence in those areas. But think about it. Of course there wouldn't be. Their culture was destroyed. They were refugees, captives in a foreign land. They wouldn't have left much behind that would be distinctively Israelite. There's also some indication in ancient literature of that time that they moved on fairly quickly, either because there were opportunities for a better life elsewhere or because they just plain weren't welcome among the people where they settled. So where would these Israelites have gone? South? No, that was Assyria. Northwest? Well, some probably did, moving into the ruins of the Hittite Empire. North? Possibly, even though the intimidating Caucasus Mountains lay in that direction. How about East? Yeah, there were wide and sparsely inhabited lands in what is now Central Asia. As the Bible records, some were already relocated far to the east among the Medes in what is now northern Iran. So if they moved on from there, how would they have done it? Well, there was the Silk Road, which was a major trade route leading from modern-day Turkey east through Persia, now called Iran, with branches into Pakistan, India, and China. So where exactly would that lead them? Some might wonder, could whole tribes of people move around like that? Well, sure. In fact, such wanderings weren't at all that uncommon. Think of the great Aryan migrations out of Iran into India in the second millennium BC. Think of the massive barbarian tribal migrations that brought down the Western Roman Empire in the fifth century AD. Think of the huge Anglo-Saxon migration out of northern Germany and nearby coastal regions into Britain in roughly the same time period as Rome was collapsing in the west. Large groups of people did move around, sometimes covering quite a bit of ground in the process. So where did the Israelites go? Well, a big chunk of these people may have ended up in Central Asia, in the area of what is now Uzbekistan. They may have specifically ended up in centers like Bukhara and Samarkand. For instance, there has been a group of people in that region for many, many centuries known as Bukharan Jews. And most likely there was a significant Jewish presence among this group, probably from a later migration of Jews out of Babylon in the 500s BC. But some of the Bukharans insist that they aren't Jews at all, but B'nai Israel, the sons of Israel. For example, there's a city in Uzbekistan called Samarkand, where many Israelites may have settled. The very name tells us who the original founders of the city may have been back in the 7th century BC. Gee, that's just about the same time that the Israelites could have arrived there from the west. So in the ancient form of the Tajik language, Khand means city. Fair enough, but what could the Samar part of the name be referring to? Samarkand. Well, where did many of the Israelite refugees come from? They came from the conquered capital city of Israel, which would be Samaria. In fact, Samaria was often used as just another name for Israel as a whole, much like London could represent Britain or Washington represents the United States as a whole. So anyone from Israel might be known to foreigners as someone from Samaria. So could Samar Khand mean Samaria city? Quite likely. Okay, maybe sometime around 2,600 years ago, a significant group of Israelites migrated to Central Asia and settled in Uzbekistan. Are there people today in that region that show evidence of being descendants of Israel? To find out, join me in the next segment of Where Are the Lost Tribes of Israel? This is Dr. Michael Bogart with Aspect Ministries. We'll see you then.